presentation of Science Trek on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore and Bettis family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. By the Idaho National Laboratory, mentoring talent and finding solutions for energy and security challenges. By the Friends of Idaho Public Television and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Forests play an essential role in our world, providing everything from a home to thousands of creatures to fuel and recreation for humans. But there's more to forests than just the trees. Find out. Stay tuned. Science Trek is next. I'm Joan Cartan Hansen, and welcome to Science Trek, and welcome to the University of Idaho's College of Natural Resources. Scientists are standing by to answer your questions about forests. A little later in the show, we'll go into more detail about trees. But first, let's learn a little bit more about forests. Forests cover about 30% of the Earth's surface. That's right. Forests are one of our world's biomes. A biome is a large geographical area that contains similar plants, animals, and environments. A forest is a complex community of life in which trees are the dominant life form. There are three basic types of forests. The tropical rainforest, the temperate forest, and the boreal forest. The types of forests can be defined by the types of trees and the amount of rain. Rainforests are mostly found around the equator. They cover about 7% of the Earth's surface. Rainforests have the greatest variety of trees. We have two basic seasons, wet and dry. And because the climate is so warm, rainforests are evergreen. That is, the trees don't lose their leaves. Rainforests are also so moist that some can even create their own rain. Temperate forests grow in North America, Northeastern Asia, Western and Central Europe, and South of the Equator. Temperate forests enjoy all four seasons of weather. Temperate forests have deciduous and conifer, or evergreen trees. Deciduous is Latin and means to fall. Deciduous trees lose their leaves in the fall and regrow them in the spring. Conifer or evergreen trees have needles and keep them year round. Temperate deciduous forests in North America have trees like oak, maple, and beech. In the Southern Hemisphere, tropical deciduous forests have a warmer climate. Trees here don't grow as tall. Their trunks and branches twist more and their tree's bark is thicker. Forests, no matter the type, have three basic zones. The top is called the canopy. That's where branches join together to form sort of a roof over the rest of the forest. The next level is the understory. That's where the small bushes, plants, and saplings live underneath the mature tree's canopy. The final level is the forest floor. Here, living things like algae, fungi, lichen, moss, and the decaying plants and leaves create a squishy carpet on the forest floor. Here's a fact for you. Insects are the only creatures that live in all levels of the forest. More than five million land species depend upon forests for their survival. Forests are where they live, where they find food. Forests provide services to people, too. They absorb carbon from the atmosphere. They give us wood for fuel, furniture, houses, and paper. They give us a place to recreate and to enjoy nature. Forests and the plants that live in them are the basis for medicine and food. Forests give us the ability to regulate temperature and they clean the air of pollution. Most importantly, forests clean our water and provide oxygen we breathe. One large tree can capture and filter 36,500 gallons of water a year. And two mature trees provide enough oxygen for one person to breathe over a year. Forests are so important, they've been called our planet's lungs. But the world's forests are in trouble. More than 50% of the planet's forests have already been destroyed, and we're losing forests at a staggering rate, the equivalent of the size of 48 football fields every minute. Some forests are cleared for agricultural uses or mining. Some are lost to disease and pests. Large amounts are lost to wildfires. We need to take care of our forest. We need our forest for clean air and clean water. We need forest for recreation and for a home for all those animals and plants. 
So you do your part so we all have forests to enjoy. And joining me now to answer your questions about forests are Tara Hudeberg, an assistant professor in the Department of Forest, Rangeland, and Fire Sciences at the University of Idaho, and Daniel Johnson, also an assistant professor in the Department of Forest, Rangeland, and Fire Sciences at the University of Idaho. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. Okay, let's go to your questions. Hi, my name is Marianne, and my question is, how many types of forests exist? There are three major forest types in the world. We call them biomes. There's the tropical forest biome, the temperate forest biome, and the boreal, or the taiga forest biome. The temperate forest biome is what we have in the United States. It is at the um, you know, 45 to 6 degree latitudes. And above the 6 degree latitude, we have the boreal forest, which is, think about northern Canada, um, or most of Canada, and, and Russia. And then the tropical forests are down by the equator. Um, north and south of the equator. Within these different forest types, we have um, like sub-levels of forests. So in the temperate forest, we have the deciduous forest, so the hardwood forest that exists on the east coast, where Dan is from. And uh, on the west coast, we have coniferous forests, which, which is what you're mostly used to in Idaho. Hi, my name is Tyler. How many species of animals in the rainforest are endangered? Well, globally speaking, there's about 15,000 animal species that are endangered. So less than that in the rainforest, maybe half of that much. Hi, my name's Mason, and how many layers are in the rainforest? So the rainforests actually have an additional layer that we do not have in our forests in Idaho. It is called the emergent layer, but all forests have the overstory canopy layer, the understory, and the forest floor. Hi, my name is Sophia, and my question is, how do forests clean water? Forests clean water in actually several different ways. Um, when it rains, that rain actually filters through the canopy, um, which is where the leaves are, and that's one level of filtering. And then the water continues on either through the canopy or along the trunks of trees into the soil, and then permeates into the soil, which acts as an additional filter and then the water goes from there into the groundwater or into streams. So you have one set of filters in the canopy and then you have another set of filters in the soil um, that actually clean the water. Hi, my name is Ren and my question is how many national forests are there in Idaho? So there are 10 national forests in Idaho. Um, many of them are in northern Idaho in the Panhandle. Uh, the Clearwater National Forest, uh, the St. Joe National Forest, um, a lot of national forests in Idaho have been getting a lot of national attention because of wildfire in forests in Idaho, so you've probably heard of a lot of them. My name is Andy, and I have a question to take about the forest. Are forest fires good for the forest? Well, it depends. So if it is a very hot, very severe forest fire, that can actually be bad for forests um, because it can kill all of the living material in the soil as well as all of the trees. But a more mild, less severe burn can actually be very healthy for forests um, because it can remove fuels that might otherwise lead to a more severe forest fire. The canopy of a rainforest can be really thick. It can take a raindrop 10 minutes to fall from the top of the canopy to the rainforest floor. And the rainforests in the Amazon basin are responsible for a fifth of our world's fresh water supply. My name is Kayla and my question is, um, what are all the different types of soil that are in forests? So there are actually many different soil types that forests grow on. It really depends on where those forests are located and um, what type of vegetation is growing there. Uh, the parent material, which is um, what is available as a substrate to form soil that trees grow on, is what kind of determines the type of soil that will be there at the beginning. If it has a lot of sand, it will be a sandy soil. If it has a lot of clay, it will be a clay soil. 
that these types of soils affect how much nutrition or nutrient content there can be in the soil and plants need nutrients to grow, trees need nutrients to grow, they need, they need nitrogen and they need phosphorus. In general, what we refer to as um, nutrient-rich soils are the soils that tend to be under agriculture, that's why we, we grow crops there, but um, northern forests, like the temperate forests, the boreal forests, have higher nutrition content or higher nutrient content in general than tropical forests. Um, tropical forests actually have very nutrient-poor soils. Hi, my name is Lexi, my, and my question is, what is the tree line? So, tree line is the point at which trees stop growing or there are no more tree-like growth forms. So uh, there's a couple of examples. So as you move higher on a mountain in terms of altitude, you will notice a, an altitude where trees stop growing and we call that the high altitude tree line. Also, as you move higher in latitude, uh, move further north, there's also a high latitude tree line. So you can have either altitudinal or latitudinal tree line. Hi, my name is Varen, and I have a question for the forest. Why do people cut down trees from the forest? People cut down trees mostly for wood. Um, we depend on wood products for our houses, for paper, um, many other things. Actually, the wood products industry, industry is expanded into, into glues, um, resins, uh, and many other types of things. Sometimes people cut down trees, though, just for land conversion, so to grow, to grow crops for food. Um, the rate of forest harvest has both increased and decreased depending on where you are in the world. Um, in the U.S. it's remained relatively constant over the last couple decades. Hi, my name is Michael and my question is what are the effects climate change has on national forests? So the effect of climate change on forests differs depending on the area where the forest is. So in some places climates are getting drier which would have a negative impact on the forests, so they would grow more slowly. Um, in some places, climates are getting wetter, which might have a, a positive effect on the forest. They could grow faster. Um, and, and likewise, some places are getting warmer and some places are getting cooler. So the effect of climate change on the forests um, is different depending on region. And I think um, a lot of it is um, we're really uncertain. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, and so some of it's a little bit unpredictable. And another thing that, that climate change is changing is the disturbance regimes. We've talked about fire a lot being a part of disturbance regimes in forests, and climate change may be increasing the activity of fire in forests, and that's obviously going to affect forest growth because it will kill some of the trees and they can no longer grow. Um, there are also insect pathogens like beetles that may be um, having population increases, which um, if you think about any uh, predator, if you think about beetles being a predator of trees, if you have an increased predator population, you're gonna have increased mortality of the prey, in this case, the trees. And um, beetles are favoring the warmer climates that we're getting with climate change. Trees are the most important part of a forest. So let's learn a little bit more about these amazing plants. What is the oldest thing on earth? What's the heaviest? What's the tallest? It's a tree. A tree is a plant. It's a special kind of plant because it builds up strength by producing wood. Trees have five basic parts. The roots, the trunk, the branches, the leaves, and the flowers or seeds. Roots are what trees use to collect water and nutrients. They also spread out to keep the tree standing upright. Roots from a 150 foot tall tree stretch under the earth for the area the size of a soccer field. The trunk is the tree's support and transport system. The center part of the trunk is called the heartwood, the supporting pillar of the tree. It's made up of dead cells. The next layer is the sapwood. It contains a system of tubes like straws. It transports water and nutrients from the roots through to the leaves and the other parts of the tree. The next layer is the cambium. It makes new sapwood and new bark each year, allowing the tree to grow wider. The outside layer is the tree's bark. The outer bark protects and insulates the tree. 
the inner bark or phylum carries sap full of sugar from leaves to the rest of the tree. Bark varies a lot from type of tree to type of tree. Some of it is so unique that you can identify the tree just by looking at the bark. You can tell how old a tree is by looking at its trunk. Every year a tree grows, it adds a new growth ring. Count the rings and you know how old the tree is. The way a tree spreads its branches depends upon its species. Trees reach out to expose their leaves to the sun. Together, the branches and the leaves or needles make up the tree's canopy. And like you, trees need food. <laughs> Except that trees make their own food. They use a process called photosynthesis. Water and nutrients are sent up from the roots to the leaves. The leaves take in carbon dioxide from the air. Using energy from the sun, the leaves combine the water and the carbon dioxide to make sugars that the tree uses to feed itself. And in the process, the leaves release oxygen and water vapor into the air. Trees also produce seeds. Many trees produce a flower that's pollinated and grows seed. But some trees produce the fruit we eat, like apples and pears. Their seeds are protected inside their fruit. A pine cone is a kind of fruit. It contains a pine tree seeds. The seeds are dispersed by the wind or other animals, take root on the ground, and start growing a new tree. There are two basic kinds of trees, broadleaf and conifer. Broadleaf, or sometimes called deciduous trees, have leaves that bud out in the spring and grow full and lush in the summer. Then the leaves turn color in the autumn and drop to the ground. Almost all conifer trees have dark green needles that stay on year-round. Conifer trees basically have two kinds of needles. Some have short needles that look and kind of feel like combs, and others have long needles that come in bundles. And one kind of conifer tree does change color in the fall. Tamaracks turn a beautiful yellow and then go back to green in the spring. Trees play an important part in the environment and in our lives. They shade our homes, protect our soil, and give animals and people a place to live. We get paper, lumber, medicine, fruit, nuts, even maple syrup from trees. And environmental causes like air pollution, climate change, deforestation, and overcrowding can harm trees and forests. Trees are very good at adapting to the land around them. They can outlive all other living things. But we humans need to make sure we protect the air, water, and soil so trees can grow. And we need to plant trees and take care of our forests to improve the environment. Trees are essential to all of us. My name is Noah. My question is, what's the biggest forest? When we talk about forests and we talk about forest types, um, we talk about biomes. The boreal bi biome or the taiga forest is another word for it in the northern latitudes uh, on the planet in uh, Russia and Canada. Those are the largest forests in terms of forest type and I believe the actual largest one is the one in, in Russia near Siberia. Hi, my name is Hunter and the question is what can kill a forest? There are a lot of things that can kill a forest. Uh, for example, an extreme wildfire could kill a forest, an extreme drought, uh, an insect outbreak, or even an extreme heat wave. All of those things could kill a forest. As well, humans could kill forests, uh, and we have done this in the past, where we have removed forests for agricultural use. Hi, my name is Grace. Are forests just in the mountains? Forests are not just in the mountains. Um, actually, they occur in low-lying areas. Uh, they occur in, in river bottoms. They occur at mid-elevations and uh, in mountains as well. So you actually find forests in all different types of landforms. Right. Forests cover about 30% of, of the planet, the terrestrial land mass, um, actually both in the U.S. and globally, which is interesting. And, um, but they used to cover 60%. So historically, we've removed about half of forest cover in the last couple hundred years from the globe. They could be in many more places than, than where they are now. Hi, my name is William. And my question is, how much oxygen, oxygen does a tree produce? So 
trees produce oxygen by taking carbon dioxide and sunlight and forming sugar and producing oxygen as a byproduct. Sort of like when you and I breathe, we consume oxygen and release carbon dioxide as a byproduct. So one mature tree can provide about enough oxygen for 10 people to breathe. Hi, my name is Cooper and my question is, how long does it take for the average tree to grow? So trees grow at different rates, depending on what type of forest or what species they are. Um, even in Idaho, we have different growth rates for our conifer species, so our, our evergreen trees. Um, if you compare growth rates in Idaho to growth rates uh, in Oregon, let's say, like on the coast range where the, where the um, temperate rainforests are, in the temperate rainforests, um, a Douglas fir tree uh, reaches its maximum growth rate and, and, and starts to slow down after that of about 55 to 60 years, or even 50 to 60 years. Whereas in Idaho, that same species would take around 70 to 80 years to reach its, its maximum kind of growth rate. Um, and it's even more different if you go to the southeast where there's a longer growing season that is more favorable and, more, and it's also more favorable within the growing season where um, like the lovely pine tree can reach its maximum growth at 30 years time. Why did you want to study about forests? Um, I, I grew up in the eastern part of the country uh, in the the foothills of North Carolina and m around the house that I grew up in there were several thousand acres of forest and so that's where I spent most of my time as a kid and you know even early on I realized that as I moved from one place to the other in the forest the tree types or the species changed and so as I got older, I realized that that was something that I was interested in figuring um, out more about, which is why do some species live here and not there? Uh, and so that's what led to what I currently do, which is I study um, how different stressors shape different plant communities or exactly why a plant grows here and not there. And so it was just a very natural sort of question to have as a kid that I'm still pursuing as an adult. The forest floor is one of the most important parts of the forest ecosystem. It's where decompensation takes place, making the soil rich for plants to grow. It's where most animals and insects live. And the stuff you find on the floor, it has a name. It's called duff. Hi, my name is Kirstine and I'm from Indian Hills, Pocatello, Idaho. And my question is, how can you tell how old a tree is by counting its rings? So trees put on one new ring every year. And the reason that they do that, or the way that they do that, is early in the spring, they put on a very um, light colored band of wood, which we call early wood. And then as the season progresses and it begins to um, have less, and there begins to be less water and temperatures start to cool, then that wood becomes denser and denser and darker. And we call that the late wood. And at the very end of that late wood, um, tree growth stops for that year. And then the following spring, they'll start again with a new layer of early wood. And so we can count those rings and tell exactly how many years old a tree is. You can also tell how much it grew because the ring width is related to how much wood growth there was. My name is Cole and I and my question is how do you stop wildfires? Well once a wildfire has already started uh, what we try to do is we try to suppress that wildfire which means we try to initially slow it down by removing fuels, for example, uh, dead things in the understory, dead wood, dead limbs, things like that, uh, but also by spraying water on the fire, dropping sand on the fire. We do all those things to initially try to slow it down or suppress it, and then eventually to stop it from burning. So that's the suppression of wildfire. But we also want to prevent wildfires from starting in the first place. 
And so things that we can do to prevent wildfires is again removing the fuels in the understory uh, that, could, that could burn, but also being very careful about where we um, may lay down a match after we think it's been put out or extinguishing a campfire. Things like that can go a long way in terms of preventing wildfires. My name is Jackson and my question is, does anyone live in the forest? I grew up in the forest. Um, I grew up in Port Angeles, Washington, and our property boundary was with the Olympic National Park. And so we could just be in the Olympic National Park whenever we wanted to as children. I believe Dan also grew up in the forest. I, uh, I, I grew up in the woods as well. Um, my parents, uh, their house was bordered by several thousand acres of forest, and so I grew up in the woods, and I guess Probably one of the reasons that Tara and I do what we do is because we grew up in the woods. And we're not alone. There are a lot of people in the U.S. as well as other countries that choose to live in the forest because they like the aesthetics of being inside a forest. If a student is interested in a job in forestry, what should he or she study in school? It helps to have a, just a natural passion for trees and for forests. Uh, but as background material, math, I know this is probably not a very popular answer, uh, but math is very important, physics is very important, chemistry, all of the basic hard sciences uh, lead to a very good foundation that can prepare you to study trees. Because trees, at their core, um, pardon the pun, uh, but at their core, it's, it all comes down to physics um, and chemistry. So in addition to physics and chemistry and math, you should also take biology. So in biology, you will learn how trees grow and um, how different trees grow at different rates. I'm sorry, we've run out of time. My thanks to Tara and Daniel for answering students' questions. Thank you for having us. We both really had fun and appreciated it. This is a good time. Thank you very much. My thanks also to the folks here at the University of Idaho's College of Natural Resources for hosting us. You can learn more about forests and lots of other scientific topics on the Science Trek website. And we'll answer more questions about forests on Science Trek, the web show. And if you want to submit a question for Science Trek, it's easy. You can send it as an email or a video question, record it on your webcam or cell phone. And if you're an educator, we'll even lend you a camera. And each week, check out my blog for the latest science news for kids. You'll find all the details at idahoptv.org slash science trek. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Science Trek. Presentation of Science Trek on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore and Bettis family legacy of building the great state of Idaho. By the Idaho National Laboratory, mentoring talent and finding solutions for energy and security challenges. By the Friends of Idaho Public Television and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. If you want to learn more about this topic or watch our videos, check out the Science Trek website at idahoptv.org slash science trek.